6.49 a.m. And next on Morning Barbados, there's really always fantastic when you get the opportunity to escape into the pages of a book, especially when we get the opportunity to celebrate another Barbadian writer. Here's Jewel. Thank you very much, Bella. He just said to me, you guys are entirely too perky for this hour this morning. <laughs> Just about 11 minutes now before the hour of 7. Four Saints and an Angel is written by Dr. Ronald Williams. He's an author. He is a Barbadian, born in Barbados, but he currently lives and works in Washington, D.C. He's the vice president of the college board there, and he has a Ph.D. in English. Now, that would explain for me the wonderful cadence of the book. He writes like how Barbadians talk. I mean, when you read the book, it's like you're talking it. It is a wonderful read. I started reading the first chap first couple of chapters last night, and throughout it, I kept smiling because so much of it is us. Good morning, Dr. Oh, good morning. Good seeing you. Tell me a little <coughs> bit about yourself. I grew up here. I uh, went to College Ferry, and uh, oh, I started at... CP boy. At CP boy. I went to Sybil Leacox Primary, and I have to say that if not, she'll kill me. <laughs> I uh, also went to the community college here and then went to University in the U.S. Mm -hmm. have worked there since uh, I began my career. So what, what pushed you into writing this book? Because you're the president of the, uh, of, of, of the college board, which means you do SAT exams. That's how you know. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm flattered. Uh, most people don't have a clue. So you sit on the board of something. No, we are about a $600 million company. Mm -hmm. uh, we sell the SAT, advanced placement, international baccalaureate, CLEP exams, and that sort of thing. Yeah, so we are a real academic, so talk to me about this book. I've always written. I mean, I've always, I've, uh, well, at least I should say I've always told stories. And mm -hmm. when I was a kid, I got punished for telling stories. <laughs> now I get paid for telling <laughs> stories. It's kind of a reversal of fortune. But um, <clears throat> I've always written. And when I was president of uh, college, I, which I stepped down from two years ago, I found that relieving the stress of running a large organization was something I absolutely had to figure out how to do. And when you run big organizations, often you don't get to sleep. You wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and toss and turn. And I figured since I was getting tired doing that anyway, I may as well do something with the time. So I started writing. So I've been writing for about 12 years. I've written um, nine novels. <coughs> this is the first that was published because publishing is very different from writing. It's okay. a business. So, yeah. so it's one thing to time. write it, but then it's to get it published. Absolutely. And I didn't have the time when I was president. So. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm not president, I've got more time. I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the story of uh, four, four, four saints and angel. Mm -hmm. um, it's written about a Barbados that's coming out of its colonial past, but still very high bound by a lot of those traditions and the thinking of that time. Yeah. How do you still get yourself back into that world? It's very easy, actually, because because it's the world I grew up in. It's sort of my formative memories. If you think that I left here in 1973, which is in some ways the halfway point. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you look back 10 years, you're in donkey carts, and you look forward 10 years, you're in first class in airplanes mm -hmm. and golf courses. So I sit at that nexus of past and present, and I can write very easily from that central point looking back and forwards. It, it's not that difficult to do. But you've mentioned cadence and you, you have no idea how flattering that is <laughs> for somebody who hasn't lived here. For but that was my years. thing. You don't live here. <laughs> so you're not like myself or Belle that we live yeah. here so we could, this would be easy <laughs> for us. Even even at one point you talk about how Barbadians speak proper English mm -hmm. but then when they really get passionate and riled up about something they slip right. into the dialect right. because that right. is their strength mm -hmm. and, and that really tells um, and I need to find the exact the, the exact quotation because I thought it was so funny and and so real um, where she talked about you can't say certain things in proper English you right. have to say in dialect for people to really understand what you're trying to say and how, how strong that is for you sure. so that's what I'm saying the, 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 you write in the cadence of how we speak I try to do that and, and I have many of our writers also use di um, use dialect within dialogue mm -hmm. I also try to keep the same rhythm within the narrative sections so I think that's what you sense, but I work very hard at doing that. And but it's it's the point you make about about the difference between dialect and standard English. And I think dialect carries passion better. Yes, it does. And if you if you're overseas and you're trying to tell a local joke from when you were a kid, and they don't understand the dialect, forget it. The, the joke dies. So struggling with that um, as a writer is also very interesting because I, I, you write for a broader audience than the Barbadian, the Barbadian audience. audience. And you've got to figure out to get language that actually conveys to them 
the same thing that the Barbadian would hear. So it, it's very interesting working on that. I'm going to read you that little piece from the book where um, he says, the slip back into the dialect was the measure of her emotion, for language was a bridge that carried heavy traffic in this land, and nothing conveyed emotion for these women like the soft cadence of the dialect. They shifted language as they did lanes on a highway, using English to get from place to place, but shifting to the dialect when there was a need for acceleration. As Marjorie herself was fond of saying, you can't get speaky spooky with personal stuff. I love that. And that is so very, very true. We, we, we speak great English in mm -hmm. the workplace, but then when you have to speak about something that means something to you, you slip back into that dialect. And it's Passion. such a, a natural thing. You almost sometimes don't don't recognize it. Mm -hmm. And like even here during the show, sometimes I have to pull myself back because I, I slip in so easily into that dialect. Tell me a little bit about the story. The story is about seven friends who grew up uh, together, largely set around the four women. And